Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorder is one of the signature research programs at Duke NUS Medical School. Our aim is to carry out research in areas that address the clustering of metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and cardiovascular disease, which are epidemic in Singapore and across Asia. To achieve this objective, we bring together top flight researchers working to unravel the interactions between metabolic disorders and cardiovascular diseases, focusing on translational discoveries that can impact clinical care. My name is Stuart Cook. I'm the Director of the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disease Signature Research Program here at Duke NUS. CVMD program is very tightly aligned uh, with the um, program with National Heart Centre Singapore, uh, which is on the patient end of the spectrum. In CVMD here in Duke and US, we're more on the um, translational um, end, end of the spectrum uh, of, of science re relating to cardiovascular and metabolic disease. Between these two institutions, we have joined together to make a virtual institution called the National Heart Research Institute Singapore, which brings together the clinicians with the basic scientists to give us the best chance of translating excellent science for patient care. Within the CVMD program here at Duke NUS, we have 14 principal investigators who lead individual programs, and these range from uh, basic science through to computational science and through to more translational science, working on things like fat, diabetes, heart muscle function, the thyroid gland, and the liver. Within the program, we are very open to and encourage students to come through and participate in our programs and in our individual research um, endeavors. And we have PhD students who come through Duke NUS through the basic science um, program, but also we have medical students who can incorporate part of their um, training as a PhD uh, in an extended uh, training period before becoming uh, clinic clinically qualified doctors. We're very proud of our ability to pull through basic research into the clinical environment and this is very much uh, helped by our very strong links with the National Heart Centre Singapore and the clinicians there who enable us to get access to patients and patient material which is critical for effective translational science. We're also extremely um, proud of our ability to bring our uh, basic science through translation and into the commercial sphere with regard to patents and spin-out companies which is something uh, that we have done very successfully and really brings the science to the patient at the end of this long uh, journey of translational science. Cardiovascular disease itself just to point out is extremely important it is the number one cause of death and ill health in Singapore around the world and it is fueled by this epidemic of diabetes and obesity and this is something that we are trying to tackle holistically as a group here. So we have people working across the spectrum from the diabetes angle to the obesity angle to the end organ angle, which is the, the um, injury to the vasculature, the arteries, and also to the heart. So by bringing this all together within one space, we actually have a, a very nice transition of expertise between the research programs, which is very synergistic and enables us to drive the science forward very fast. Hello, my name is David Silver. I'm a professor and deputy director of the Signature Research Program in Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders at Duke NUS Medical School in Singapore. I have a long-standing interest in understanding how cells store and transport lipids and the role of lipids in health and disease. Currently, our research focuses on our discovery of the lysolipid transporter called MFSD2A that is expressed at the blood-brain barrier. We have demonstrated using both cell-based mouse models and human genetics that MFSD2A is essential for human brain development and the major route by which the brain obtains essential fatty acids. My lab trains a mix of postdoctoral research fellows, PhD and MD-PhD students, and research assistants. Trainees from my lab have gone on to postdoctoral fellowships in the U.S., hold faculty positions in Singapore and the U.S., and have positions in the private sector in the pharmaceutical and consumer healthcare industries. In addition to my academic research, I am the scientific founder of Trevecta Therapeutics and Von Terris. These are two biotechnology companies that are exploiting our science around MFSD2A to develop novel therapeutics for human health. Von Terris is developing therapeutic applications for lysolipids that are transported by MFSD2A, while Trevecta Therapeutics develop therapeutic compounds that cross the blood-brain barrier via MFST2A for the treatment of neurological diseases. Hi, I'm Lei Sun. 
an associate professor in Duke in US. My team has been working on the role of RNA regulatory network in metabolic sensing and adaptation. The growth and survival of all cells rely on their constant adaptation to local and systemic nutrient signals. Understanding the underlying mechanism is a fundamental and long-standing question. Our studies have revealed that many players in the RNA regulatory network, such as RNA processing and non-coding RNAs, are indispensable for the coordination between metabolic adaptation and the nutrient environment. Conducting our research requires multidisciplinary expertise in competition analysis, molecular biology, and metabolic physiology. We have formed long-term collaborations with many excellent teams in Singapore, China, USA, and other countries. Together, we have made and will continue to make important discoveries. Our work has been well-funded, published, and cited. You are welcome to join us on this exciting journey. My name is J.P. Kovalik. I'm an assistant professor here in CVMD. My main role is to serve as director of the metabolomics facility. Our metabolomics facility uses high-end mass spectrometry devices to measure things. We mostly measure chemicals that are involved in cellular metabolism. Metabolism is the biochemistry that runs all the reactions within a cell. We use this technology to look at metabolism uh, inside cells to understand how metabolism is related to the normal functioning of the cell. We all are also interested in how metabolism is linked to certain types of diseases. We work with researchers throughout Singapore as well as internationally uh, to look at different types of diseases. Our main focus is on type 2 diabetes, but we also work on other diseases such as heart failure, kidney disease, and cancer. We study uh, different types of um, samples, uh, ranging from extracts of cells grown in uh, plastic dishes to tissue from animal models, all the way up to samples from large human clinical cohorts. I'm also involved in translational research to look at human diseases. I work with a large cohort of researchers in Singapore studying diabetic kidney disease. I work with cell models, rodent models with the disease, as well as with patients in the clinic who have diabetic kidney disease. Our goal is to try to get a better understanding of how metabolism and changes in metabolism are connected to the process of kidney disease in patients with type 2 diabetes. I also am involved in more basic research projects. We are interested in understanding how metabolic signaling is involved in sensing the environment and by responding uh, by changing signal transduction pathways inside cells. Finally, I'm a medical doctor. My specialty is endocrinology. I work at Singapore General Hospital where I see patients uh, in my endocrinology clinic. My main area of interest is in patients with type 2 diabetes, as well as patients with type 2 diabetes and diabetes-related kidney disease. I'm Tom Kaufman, currently the Dean of Duke NUS, and was also the founding director of the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders Signature Research Program. Uh, I'm a kidney doctor by training and have for many years been done, done doing research on the kidney and in its role in hypertension, and in particular on one important kidney disease, diabetic nephropathy. Uh, that's the main focus of our laboratory here. and. Uh, uh, we're working on this disease, which is a major public health problem for Singapore. In fact, Singapore has the number one incidence of diabetes as a cause for end-stage kidney disease. And our work here is trying to understand the basic underlying mechanisms of that disease in order to design new treatments and new ways of diagnosing this problem. Our work on diabetic kidney disease is supported by a large collaborative grant for the uh, National Medical Research Council called Dynamo. And Dynamo supports uh, quite a large program consisting of both basic discovery scientists all the way to clinical researchers who work on uh, patient cohorts uh, that consist of more than 30,000 patients here in Singapore. Um, and again, the, the major focus of this work is really to understand better the causes of diabetic kidney disease uh, to, in order to develop new 
treatments, but also in order to uh, try and identify the patients with diabetes who are at risk for going on to develop kidney disease. While this project, the Dynamo Project, is focused in Singapore, we also have a number of international collaborators. So uh, more than uh, uh, six countries are involved, 25 institutions, and, all, and more than 70 PIs. Uh, so it's quite an international uh, uh, and collaborative program, but focused primarily on this important disease that affects the public health in Singapore. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Paul Yen. I'm a professor at Duke NUS Medical School. Uh, I am the uh, head of the Laboratory of Hormonal Regulation, which is part of the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders Program here at Duke NUS. I started thinking more seriously about how does thyroid hormone affect uh, metabolism. And we made a very important discovery six years ago showing that thyroid hormone stimulated autophagy in the liver and this autophagy was very critical for mobilization of lipids from fat droplets to be uh, converted to fatty acids that could be used by mitochondria for beta oxidation. We also showed that the quality of mitochondria could be maintained by thyroid hormone as well as the synthesis of new mitochondria. That is, mitochondrial turnover is critically dependent on thyroid hormone. With all these findings, we uh, decided to look more seriously into a problem of uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is a problem that uh, concerns uh, about 30% of uh, Singaporeans, and in countries like the US and in Europe, perhaps about 40% of all adults. So this is a worldwide phenomenon. And what we found uh, using a clinical study based on some of our work was that thyroid hormone levothyroxine was able to decrease the fatty liver content in uh, diabetic patients with uh, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, this paper was published last year in uh, uh, the journal, journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. This uh, builds on a lot of our earlier work published in uh, the JCI uh, and autophagy and science signaling, showing the role of thyroid hormone in uh, uh, lipophagy and mitophagy. Our group is not big, but on the other hand, I think we're trying to tackle a very big problem uh, from a uh, medical perspective. And I have multiple collaborations with uh, Duke investigators. Uh, one of the most fruitful has been with uh, Dr. Dwight Coburn, who uh, is a professor of pediatric genetics at Duke. We share a R01 grant uh, and uh, looking at using autophagy drugs to treat a glycogen storage disorder in which patients develop uh, fatty liver disease. This glycogen storage disorder is called GSD1A and is the most common glycogen storage disease uh, uh, in the United States. And our hope is that some of our research on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can be transferable to work for treating GSD1A and uh, vice versa. My current funding involves uh, funding from the NMRC with uh, CIRGs uh, in two different areas. One is looking at thyroid hormone action in the liver. Another one is looking at uh, transcription factors called YAP-TAS. We also collaborate with uh, Stuart Cook in our group uh, in his uh, seminal work on IL-11 and recently published a paper on gastroenterology uh, in uh, uh, collaboration with him showing that using antibodies that block IL-11 or the IL-11 receptor can be very effective as a treatment against uh, fibrosis. My name is Carl Trickvason. I'm a professor uh, here at the Duke NUS Medical School. My main research projects involve studies on kidney diseases. During the years we have cloned the genes for many genetic kidney diseases. We are working on the um, genetic mechanisms of kidney disease in uh, diabetic patients, which is an important uh, project for Singapore. Uh, we are members of the MITBIG uh, Dynamo Research Project, headed by Professor and the Dean of Medical School, Tom Kaufman. We have already received very interesting uh, new results on the genetic components involved in development of diabetic kidney disease. We have published a lot of research articles over 500 during the years, have received many 
international prices from various international associations in the United States, in Sweden, Finland. So my research project uh, involves uh, primarily two major areas. One is uh, causes of kidney diseases, uh, particularly nowadays in uh, patients who have diabetes. Certain patients develop kidney disease when they have diabetes and others do not. We would like to know the genetic causes why certain individuals with diabetes develop kidney disease and others not. We have some unique materials uh, for analysis of their DNA. Study that here in Finnish populations and the Singaporean population. We hope that that work will lead to a new understanding of uh, genes which are involved in development of kidney disease in diabetes, which is a huge problem in this country. Another major problem, a uh, research question that we have is to study how components of the uh, connective tissue, particularly molecules called uh, laminins, how they influence uh, differentiation of stem cells. And we are developing cells from pluripotent stem cells that can be used to treat uh, heart disease, eye disease, type 1 diabetes, and etc. Environment here in Singapore for research, both medical basic research and applied research is excellent. And uh, we are very pleased to, to uh, be able to participate in this uh, unique um, uh, research environment that uh, the country has developed during the last uh, few decades. Hello, my name is Jens Tietze. I come from Germany and my research interest is in salt and water metabolism. When I went to school 25 years ago, I was taught that everything you need to know about salt and water metabolism is understanding kidney function. 20 years later, we start to understand that the body actually is comprised of many different boxes and they all have their own patterns of salt and water regulation. And what we found is that Actually, the kidney and the liver are working together and the skin and the kidneys are working together and the stomatorenal regulation is very important for blood pressure regulation and the hepatorenal regulation is very important for energy metabolism in conjunction with water metabolism and that somehow translates into diabetes mellitus. We work now in kidney function and liver function and heart function and skin function and of course we cannot be expert in all those fields and this is why CVMD is perfect for us with all the different expertise that we have in the department um, and that allows us in collaboration with the clinics to do a clinical research program in parallel with an animal research program. Uh, so my name is Stuart Cook. I'm a professor here at uh, Duke NUS and also a consultant in the hospital at the National Heart Centre Singapore. My research group is focused around using uh, genetic and genomic approaches in uh, humans and patients uh, to try and find new uh, disease pathways and genes that we can then validate in the basic science lab and then bring this forward to uh, patients is our ultimate goal um, in terms of translating it for diagnostic or therapeutic use. We've been particularly interested in the genetics of um, heart muscle failure, which is a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy, where the heart gets um, big and baggy and it can't pump properly. I made a number of uh, very insightful um, roads into this over the last number of years, particularly in the, in the titan gene, which is the biggest gene in the human body. Uh, and these have this, uh, this body of work has now um, matured and has actually translated to the clinic uh, and we are now using uh, diagnostic tools that we developed in the basic science lab which have now transitioned into patient care both here in Singapore uh, and also around the world so that's been a very uh, gratifying um, experience over the last five years or so. Um, more recently we've been interested in um, a condition called fibrosis which is scarring uh, and scarring happens in diseased organs such as the heart and 
the kidney, but also in other organs like the liver, the skin, and the back of the eye. Uh, and we set out in a large research program with collaboration at the National Heart Center Singapore with the surgeons there. Uh, and we invited patients to take part in a study where we took a very small piece of their heart um, at the time that they were having operation and then grew out the cells from this piece uh, and then studied those cells. And this led to the uh, breakthrough discovery of the gene, the interleukin 11 gene, we call it IL-11, uh, which is critical for fibrosis. Uh, we published this in Nature in 2017, uh, showing that this gene controls the fibrosis of the diseased heart and also the diseased uh, kidney. This then uh, resulted in an explosion of research really in my group around the interleukin-11 gene and we have now uh, studied its effect in the uh, lungs and also the uh, um, kidney, uh, furthermore in the liver and also now the skin and the pancreas. Um, and what we're finding is this gene is critically important for scarring and regeneration of all the organs in, in the body. Um, and what's quite exciting about this work is we've now been able to file a number of patents. So we've filed over eight different patent families around this gene uh, and around um, special drugs called therapeutic antibodies which turn this gene off. Uh, and we've managed to um, take this, uh, these patents and these products and license them into a spin-out company here in Singapore uh, called Enlia Fenbio, where we are actually developing these antibodies for use in humans to try and prevent uh, and actually reverse scarring and organ dysfunction, particularly of the liver uh, and with a focus on the liver and the kidney right now. Um, and we aim to bring these technologies and these drugs to patients in safety trials towards the end of next year in 2020. And so this, I think, is a very nice illustration of a body of work that comes from discovery based on patients, then into the basic science lab to prove how it works, where we then develop tools which can be used for basic science, but then can be developed further and translated uh, towards patients. Uh, and then commercialized uh, in a company which then enables us to raise money and bring this technology uh, to patient care. Hello there, my name is Derek Hausenloy. I'm a professor in the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders Research Program at Duke NUS Medical School and Senior Consultant Cardiologist and Clinician Scientist at the National Heart Center Singapore. Our research group conducts both basic science and clinical research in the area of ischemic heart disease, heart failure, and cardiac MRI. Our research focus is the discovery of novel treatments for protecting the heart against the detrimental effects of acute ischemia reperfusion injury in order to prevent the onset of heart failure. We use a translational approach to cardiac protection, ranging from cellular and animal models of acute ischemia reperfusion injury to proof of concept clinical studies in acute myocardial infarction and cardiac bypass surgery patients. And finally, to large multi-center randomized clinical trials focused on clinical outcomes. I have been PI on over 30 research grants and have authored over 260 papers. I received the ESC Cardiology Outstanding Achievement Award and the BSCR Marshall Research Excellence Award. And in 2018, I was named Highly Cited Researcher, which is awarded to the top 1% of researchers for citations in field and year in the web of science. Hi, I am Manvinder Singh, Assistant Professor at the Duke NUS Medical School. My lab studies congenital and adult cardiac diseases. We work in two main areas. First, we want to understand how cardiac tissues are formed during embryonic development and how defective signaling pathways lead to congenital defects. Second, we want to determine whether the molecules and signaling pathways required during embryonic development are also important in the adult heart for cardiac homeostasis or cardiac repair after ischemic injury. Recent publications from the lab have implicated hippo and semaphorin signaling pathways in several congenital and adult diseases, such as coronary artery disease, ventricular non-compaction, and myocardial infarction. Our long-term goal is to apply lessons learned from our developmental studies to better understand and treat cardiovascular diseases. We use mouse as a model organism and a variety of molecular biology, biochemistry, and genomic techniques to study cardiac diseases. Work in our lab is supported by grants from the National Research Foundation, Ministry of Education, and Ministry of Health. Hello, I am Lena Ho, Assistant Professor in the CVMB Department of Duke NUS Medical School. 
Our genome encodes hundreds of small peptides or small proteins that to this date have unknown functions. My lab is very interested in these because they offer us potentially new and valuable insights into human physiology. For instance, during my postdoc, I discovered that Alabella, one such small peptide, is crucial for controlling blood pressure during human pregnancy. Currently, my team called the Endogenous Peptides Lab is interested to de-orphanize these peptides in the cardiovascular system. Recently, we've discovered that the mitochondria, which is the organelle responsible for energy production, is highly enriched for these small peptides, where they play integral roles in metabolism. Because many of these are altered in common human diseases, we aim to find out exactly what they do and how they do it. Our long-term goal is to target these small peptides and their underlying pathways to boost cardiometabolic health, especially in degenerative diseases, including aging. We have multiple collaborations both locally and internationally, and our lab is home to two PhD students who are working very actively to functionalize these peptides in both the cardiovascular system and also in the context of inflammatory diseases. Our work is funded by scholarships awarded by the National Research Foundation of Singapore and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in the US. My name is Enrico Petretto and I'm Associate Professor in System Genetics. In my laboratory, we use cutting-edge genomics and advanced computational approaches to identify drug targets for complex disease. To this aim, we have developed a new approach, which we call system genetics. What is system genetics? In system genetics, we study molecular pathways such as gene networks that are driving the disease process, and then identify which genes control these pathways in human disease. We call these genes master genetic regulators, and these master regulators can be targeted to develop new drugs. We have applied the system genetic approach to several diseases, including heart, kidney, and fibrotic disease. For example, we have recently discovered a network of genes that drive pathological fibrosis in heart disease, like dilated cardiomyopathy. And we also identify the WWP2 gene as a master regulator gene for the whole fibrosis network in the human heart. We are now working to develop new drugs to target this WWP2 gene, and hopefully develop new therapeutic approaches that can control pathological cardiac fibrosis, for instance, to control disease like cardiomyopathy to progress to heart failure. Our system genetics approach is highly multidisciplinary, and we combine computational methods with mechanistic experiments in cells and in vivo systems, also using preclinical model of disease. As such, my laboratory hosts computational biologists, bioinformaticians, data analysts, as well as molecular and cell biologists, and provides a highly stimulating environment to learn and study complex diseases. We have trained several PhD and MD PhD students who have learned how to use advanced genomics approaches like single cell sequencing in human disease, as well as cell biologists who work, for example, on new antifibrotic drugs. Many students and research fellows from my lab have now taken top positions in genomics companies who have started their own research lab in prestigious university in Singapore and abroad. We collaborate with many groups in Singapore as well as internationally. For example, we have established a collaboration with Monash University in Australia, and together we have generated a comprehensive single cell sequencing atlas in human Alzheimer's disease brain, which will facilitate brain researchers to explore the gene networks which control cell fate transition between healthy and Alzheimer's disease cell state in the human brain. My lab is now focused on translating our system genetics approach to efficiently identify new drug targets for important diseases like diabetic nephropathy, fibrotic heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Hi, my name is Sujo Aikosh. I'm an associate professor in the program in cardiovascular and metabolic disease at Duke and US Medical School. 
I am also affiliated with the Center for Computational Biology at Duke and US. My lab is divided into a dry lab and a wet lab. In the dry lab section, we use advanced bioinformatics analysis of complex data sets. My own research interest is in understanding the genetic basis of cardiometabolic diseases such as diabetes, obesity, body fat deposition, and exercise capacity in humans. So what we do there is we have access to large data sets that we analyze using advanced methodologies to identify new genes and new pathways that might be associated with particular traits. On the wet lab side, our lab works to validate some of the genes and pathways that are identified from our bioinformatics screens. So for example, right now we are working on identifying and validating two novel genes that we found was associated to atherosclerosis. In terms of collaborations, our lab collaborates extensively with national and international collaborators both for the dry lab and for the wet lab side. For the dry lab, we work with investigators who have large data sets such as from omics studies or from next generation sequencing studies. And we again apply integrative bioinformatics tools to identify pathways and new genes arising from their studies and to gain meaningful insights from those studies. For the wet lab, I collaborate with investigators who have expertise in say, for example, mouse models to progress the findings that we can get from our bioinformatics analysis. Our lab has been relatively well funded over the past few years from Singapore as well as from outside. We were the recipients of a smart MIT Alliance funding and funding from the Ministry of Education. As a collaborator, I also have funding from the NMRC as well as from the National Institutes of Health in the United States. Right now, my lab has undergraduate students, master's level students, and postdoctoral fellows. They work on either the dry lab or the wet lab part of the lab. We are all quite busy for most of the time, but we enjoy tremendously what we do. And uh, we are very happy to invite other people to collaborate with us or to apply for studentship in our lab. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Owen Rackham, and I'm an assistant professor in the Program for Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders and the Center for Computational Biology. I run the data-driven biology group here at Duke NUS, which combines both experimental and computational expertise to tackle important questions in biology. Data-driven biology is an approach to questions which is predominantly led by the development of technologies that combine biological big data with machine learning in order to derive a hypothesis which we can then go on to validate in the lab. Our main focus is on understanding what defines different cell types. By doing this, we are able to find ways to systematically control cell type, giving us the ability to create any human cell type in the lab. The reason that this is so important is that once we have this understanding, we can generate therapies that use our own cells as drugs, so-called cell therapy. We can also work out how the environment drives cell type changes that occur in disease, and then finding interventions to stop this from happening. Critically, because we are a data-driven lab, we are not constrained to work on a narrow set of problems, and this has meant in the last three years, we have published high-impact papers in fields as diverse as neuroscience, cardiovascular disease, and we have ongoing interests in cancer and stem cell biology. Our goal is to have a global understanding so that we can help improve the, any disease that we study. We have a number of institutional, national and international collaborators. We work within Duke NUS with Professor Cook and Dr Schaefer and internationally with Professor Polo from Monash in Australia and Professor Goff from Cambridge in the UK. In the last three years, my group has been involved in grants worth over 15 million Singapore dollars, 5 million of which has been awarded directly to our group. We have represented Duke NUS at a number of international conferences and as members of large international consortiums such as the Phantom Consortium and the Human Cell Atlas. We have published papers in high impact journals including Nature, Nature Genetics and Circulation. And we are always looking to generate IP for the university by developing novel methods, a number of which we have filed patents on. One particular achievement that I am proud of is the development and commercialization of a technology called Mogrify. This approach, which can predict how to convert between any two human cell types, was originally published in Nature Genetics, after which I co-founded a company in order to facilitate the use of this technology to developing novel cell therapies. 
This company now has over 30 employees and has raised the equivalent of over 30 million Singapore dollars in funding. It also has a number of cell therapies in preclinical development. I have a group that spans both the wet and the dry lab, consisting of research assistants, PhD students and research fellows. We are always interested to hear from enthusiastic researchers at any level who want to combine computational and experimental tools to tackle previously intractable biological problems. Hi, my name is Anissa Wijaya. I'm from Professor Stuart Cook Lab. I've been here in CVMD Duke NUS for almost six years. Hi, I'm Bernice Wong from CVMD program here at Duke NUS. I'm currently a postdoctoral research fellow under the mentorship of Prof David Silver. So I first joined Prof Silver's lab um, six years ago. Hi, I'm Brijesh Kumar Singh and I joined here at Duke NUS seven years back and I'm working with Professor Paul M. Yen at CVMD. I'm Siti Aisha. I'm research assistant in Prof Mavendra Singh Lab in Department of Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders. I've been with Duke NUS for a year. Hi, I'm Zing. I'm an analytical chemist at the Metabolomics Lab. It has been five exciting years of working here. Hi, I'm Rashida. I've been working in the Diabetic Nephropathy Lab for the past four years under my mentor, Professor Thomas Kaufman. Hi, I'm Sonia Chotani. I'm currently a final year PhD student. I joined CVMD almost three years ago. Uh, my name is Kento Kitada, a senior research fellow uh, working at Yen's Teachers Lab at CVMD Duke NS. I came from Japan and working at Duke NS for two years now. Hi, my name is Monica. I've been working with Carl Chikasan Laboratory in CVMD Duke NUS. I also really enjoy the teamwork and collaborative spirit in CVMD. Actually, one of my main projects was started in the pantry by a simple chit-chat with an assistant professor from another lab. And here we are, two years later, we had a publication together and we are still working on a few more. The nice thing about Duke in the US is that the labs here are an open concept, so you can easily cross to the other labs just to borrow a reagent or to seek help with a problem, like if your experiments don't work, um, or even just to chat with the others. Um, so I, what I really enjoyed here is just the openness um, and how um, all the PIs here are actually really approachable as well. So it's a very fun experience all the way, very uncomfortable encouraging environment from the PIs and I joined here as postdoctoral fellow then I got promoted as senior research fellow then got promoted and joined as assistant professor research all the way along is very supportive uh, environment from my mentor Paul M. Yen. It has been a good learning journey. I've met a lot of mentors that guide me throughout for all the uh, laboratory technical skills to coordinate lab experiments. Using highly sophisticated instruments such as the mass spectrometers, I help researchers gain insights in their experiments. There are many opportunities to win grants and awards to aid in career progression. Working on a variety of intriguing projects with uh, multi-talented colleagues, I'm able to broaden my expertise. I'm really thankful with Professor Derek and uh, the university to giving me this opportunity. Here you get all the resources and high technology quality to develop the best research ever. I really enjoy being in the lab basically because my research group, we all have like different kind of personalities that, we, that make the everyday different and enjoyable. We do care about each other and I think that's the best thing about this lab. It's not about work only, it's about work and enjoy what you're doing. CBFV Duke NS has a wonderful environment to do research. For example, all professors are very nice and friendly and we can easily collaborate with each other. Also, young researchers are highly talented and highly motivated. And this environment allows us to develop our research and skills as a scientist. Being in this lab allows me to grow independently as a researcher and also develop my critical thinking uh, for my future career path. CVMD has a strong and wonderful team members that allows us to help each other and uh, to grow scientifically. I have had the pleasure of working uh, collaboratively in three labs, that is with Prof Stuart Cook, 
Prof. Owen Rackham and Prof. Sebastian Schaefer. And my work focuses on identifying regulators for scarring in the heart. Throughout my uh, PhD, uh, all, all three of my mentors have been extremely supportive and this has helped me see my project through completion and also uh, get appreciated by peers across the world and this has greatly helped me broaden my perspectives and knowledge. Come, Come and join us! us.